thanks for coming. Um, so this is an information session about adult use recreational marijuana. Um, and we're glad you're here. And first want to just go around and say who you are and if you're on a, have a role in Conway on a board or something, say that and say where you live in Conway or whatever town you live in, I guess. Just say what town you live in. So I'm Mary McClintock. I'm the chair of the planning board and I live over near the grammar school on Route 116. And I start here and go around. I'm Risa and I live not far from Mary and I start to Beth on Hussig Road in Conway. I'm Beth Gershman, I'm on the planning board and you know where I live now. Yeah. I'm Ron Kohler, thank you for having this. Uh, from Asheville, Select Boy. And I live on Bailey Road in Asheville. Peggy Sloan, Council of Governments. Ashfield resident. Ashfield. <laughs> Joe Sagowski, Conway, yeah. Greensbridge Road, yeah. planning board member. <clears throat> Robert Vega, Board of Selectmen, Town of Conway. <laughs> Pat Lynch, South Church Road, regular citizen. <laughs> Andy Jaffe, planning board member, live up the hill next to Sue. Planning board member, Sue McFarland, live up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is um, basically the goal of, we have two goals, why we're having this meeting. One is that we want to give you some information, um, especially thanking Peggy for putting together the slideshow, but give you some information about what the possibilities are for um, marijuana commercial establishments in Conway, and then have a discussion about the information that we see and what you know find out what folks concerns are um, and really we have two goals one is that providing information but really as a planning board we're looking <coughs> to get information because we are um, we don't know what people think in Conway you know if you think about it um, people voted in favor of um, the, the Franklin County as a whole and Conway voted in favor of legalizing marijuana, but we don't know what that vote means. We don't know is that because so you can grow your own marijuana in your backyard and have use per, personal use. Does that mean you want to be able to go down the street to a store and buy um, marijuana products? Does it mean you want to grow it? Does it mean that you want to go to cafes and use it in a cafe? You know, does it mean that you're concerned about marijuana being um, Illegal, when marijuana was illegal, then that involved people being arrested for marijuana, put in jail for you know marijuana use, and you know was that a concern? We don't know what people why they voted to legalize it. So we're trying to get information because, as a planning board, part of our job is um, to create zoning bylaws, um, you know, regulate how things happen in Conway to take care of each other as you know Conway residents, and so. Um, there are state regulations that are being uh, state regulations that the Cannabis Control Commission is creating. This is a, this is the current draft. You're welcome to read it. Um, but do we need more than the um, than the state regulations? Is is part of the question. So let's see what other more things I want to say. Um, really big note that what we're talking about is commercial establishments related to marijuana. We're not talking about personal use here. That's, that's, that's the planning board has nothing to do with stuff about personal use. Um, so we're gonna share the slideshow and then we're gonna have a discussion and there is no time pressure on us right this moment because we did vote for a moratorium on, in Conway till the end of the year, the end of 2018 or six months after the state regs are finalized if that happens later if they don't really get it done by March 15th. Um, so we are not going to bring anything to this town meeting in May related to um, recreational marijuana, to commercial establishments. We're right now gathering information, seeing if people are, you know, have concerns that, you know, we need to have regulations beyond the state regulations, in which case then we would need, if we needed zoning bylaws, then we would go through a whole preparing zoning bylaws, public hearing process, and we would probably go to a special town meeting in the fall to get those in place. So that's, so, we, so we're not, you know, leaving here thinking we have to get everything done before our May town meeting. Um, that's, yeah, we'll have a discussion. And then 
we have this, you know, we feel realize that this is a topic that not everybody's really in, maybe, you know, willing to say, I really want to be able to go down the street and get, you know, stuff at the store, or I really want to be able to go to the cafe, or I really don't want this in my town, or whatever. So we have a poll. We have a poll that we're going to ask everybody to take one of these sheets, write something on it at least, you know, answer the questions, write something. It's anonymous, turn it in, and then we will tally that up and see if there's, you know, what people's views are. Um, so that's that's what we're going I to do. I think most of this group will speak their piece. But. Maybe everybody will speak their piece, but we did, we, we're doing this just as a way in case there's something else you want to say that you don't want to say out loud. Okay. That's the plan for the evening. Sound good? Yes. Questions? All right. Juice. Okay. <clears throat> just want to thank Peggy again for helping us with these slides. I think she's sharing them with the whole county, is it? <laughs> or anybody that wants them. Um, when we first looked at these slides, we said, well, we're going to scare people. But the truth is, these are representative pictures of what's happening in other parts of the country. There's not a lot going on in Massachusetts yet, so we really didn't find, uh, I know we struggled looking for some craft pictures for craft marijuana, but we, there aren't a lot of those in operation. So what you have here is, on the left is a, uh, that's a dual facility. It's medical on one side and recreational on the other side. And I think the only difference is the price. You, know, you go one side, it's medical. The other side, it's recreational. Can't oh, be taxed. What's that? Can't be taxed. The taxes the medical are can't be taxed. I mean, taxes are different. The, uh, on the left, on the right, is the indoor growing facility. Most uh, growing that we're aware of is done internally in the building. Um, it's done with you know, um, high intensity lighting, and, and a lot of it's done hydroponically. Um, this is an artisan grow facility where they're growing them in pots. There are some outside growing in California, I believe. That's the only one that, that I'm aware of. And I left an article on the table. The police are having a hell of a time with the outside growers. So that might be an interesting subject if it happens in Massachusetts. Um, there are different types of recreational establishments defined in the law. These were taken right out of the... Uh, Cannabis Control Commission regulate, proposed regulation. A cultivator, as you might know, is somebody that's going to raise the, the marijuana. Uh, you can also have a manufacturer who's going to maybe make edibles or infused products, as it says there. And these can be separate or they can be combined. And the, people can sign up to be any one of these. Uh, they can be a testing laboratory. Those are also in the law. A retail outlet where you go to buy it. Uh, marijuana cafes, I think those are called social consumption, if I'm not mistaken, falls in that category. Um, in that category, in, in the current law, they're talking about allowing you to go to the movie theater and buy diffused brownies before you sit down for the movie. So it, it, it may be more encompassing than just a normal cafe. Uh, there are a lot of subcategories. And then a marijuana transporter, which is, I guess, unique to Massachusetts is somebody who doesn't do any of the above, above, but he moves marijuana from one place to another. Um, I think it can go from to the uh, retail customer or uh, between facilities. Um, in there, which I didn't put up, or we didn't put up, is a micro business, which is a smaller uh, facility that can cultivate, uh, produce product, and deliver, but can't deliver to the, but, but it has to deliver to a retail outlet. It's a small business, a small amount of plants, but they're not allowed to sell to the public. Um, there's also the craft marijuana, which, which is a cooperative of, I think, it can be six locations for cultivating and three for manufacturing. This is where a group of small farmers would get together, form a cooperative. It would be a legal entity, and they can go into business and and do everything but sell to the public. They have to sell to a retail outlet. <clears throat> Some of the things that we've talked about or heard about with these facilities is uh, the heavy electrical uses. There's some pretty high intensity lighting. They grow 24 hours a day. Um, there's a lot of water use. A lot of these are done hydrophonically. I think there's one in Hoyo that's going in. And they're putting in a big water tank so that the town water supply isn't available. They can keep running the facility for some 
So it's sort of like an emergency generator and an emergency water supply. Well, hydroponics works off of usually a water, water source anyway. Yeah, like right, a, but they're, a they're reservoir worried about the, water. But they're worried that the town might not have water, I guess, so they're actually oh, putting yeah. in a storage tank so they can keep running if the water supply is disconnected. So I'm guessing water is very important. I guess you don't want to lose the water. Um, wastewater treatment. Um, there, there was some indication that there might be pesticides used in, in the processing, uh, which is, I think is on the next slide. <clears throat> but you have to, they ha and in the regulation, they have to treat the water to the, to the state standards. Um, in a big facility, there could be traffic impacts, you know, the amount of cars, um, lighting and security, you know, the, the building has to be lit generally on the outside so that the security uh, features work. Um, marijuana odors has been an issue. Um, noise pollution has been talked about. So we're looking at maybe the added law enforcement requirements. A new one that just popped up I saw the other day is this thing called gifting, um, which is happening in Massachusetts now before the law goes in, but it's apparently also happening in California, even though they have, I mean in um, Colorado, even though they have laws. Gifting is where you buy a t-shirt for $100 and it comes with a little gift. So you're not really selling the product, you're giving it to something. That's illegal in this state, though. No, it's not. They're doing it. There's, a, there's a clause inside the law that actually but, but I don't think prohibits, the law, I don't think prohibits the selling is. other items as a trade for That's what I thought. Um, I don't know if that's actually It's actually a provision in the law. It's written in the law. But is, is that part of the law? In they actually, well, they actually have enforced it. They went to Springfield and arrested them. Oh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, it's, come, it's, it's another issue for law enforcement. I don't think we have law enforcement. Um, I, public health and safety concerns. I believe right now you cannot um, get marijuana or use marijuana where there's alcohol or smoking. <coughs> if I'm reading the regulations correct, Peggy, is that your yes, understanding? Yeah. You, so you, you couldn't go to the inn alcohol. and get marijuana, but anywhere else in town you probably could. You know? It's loaded on a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess they're concerned about that one, obviously, but. Well, and part of the concern about the impaired driving is that there's no field sobriety test. Like, you can't do like a breathalyzer test like you can do with alcohol. You can't, if somebody appears to be, you know, weaving down the road or not do, having impaired driving, there isn't a way to evaluate is this impaired driving from marijuana use. You should all be aware that that's something that exists, right? Yeah, it already exists. I mean, that exists. That, that has nothing to do with the effect of anything to do with the law. Other than the fact that the law says that it's legal. But right. whether it was legal or not, I mean, people could be smoking marijuana and, and pair driving. Correct, correct, right. Uh, I think you're right. saying there's so no legal not. standard for, um, or method for testing. There's no legal standard method for testing, but whether there is or not, doesn't. That right. doesn't change. There's nothing changed. Right. There is impaired driving right now because there are people who are, there could be impaired sure. driving right now because there's people using marijuana and then driving. What the concern is that if there was increased availability of marijuana in a, you know, legal ways that there could be more people using and more people doing impaired driving. That's or in, or increased, avail increased availability with regulation may regulate it better. Maybe people will understand it better and not, not impair drive. Maybe, you know, maybe it's right. the opposite so anyway, of what but you're these, thinking. These are the kinds of concerns that have been raised around commercial marijuana establishments. Well, maybe I'm just saying that those are kind of like, you know, blanketed not concerns because they're not they're not related to well, the legalization they're not of marijuana because they exist whether it's legal or not. No, okay. Okay. You know? <clears throat> if there were a number of establishments providing it in town, there, there could be a higher level of it. I think is what we're so, saying. So, right, so that's, that's the question. That is. Right, I guess, I mean, it's as high as the level of people that are consuming the cannabis. Right, right. So. One question I had, it reads like in the law that the Asheville House could close down one night and not serve liquor, but do mar We're have a marijuana clar party. Clar <laughs> it sounds like state. you it's just can't do them simultaneously. I think something like that will probably change pretty quick. Yeah. Because we've made it illegal to smoke 
and in uh, indoors. So why would they allow people to smoke? No, no, I'm saying. Well, yeah. You're not supposed to serve alcohol and marijuana in the same at it the same time. No, I mean, I mean, but like the whole cafe idea seems seems kind hear? of ridiculous. <laughs> like it may not last <laughs> uninterrupted. So, so the, the, the question that's been raised like the Cannabis Control Commission indoors, that's doing the regulations right. is whether or not you can have, you're not supposed to have alcohol and marijuana served at simultaneously. Yeah. So the question is, can you have a facility that is a bar in the afternoon and then allows uh, smoking <coughs> in the evening, or does it have to be two Separate, separate establishments, mm -hmm. and we don't know. We don't that's know. that's one of the questions that's been raised to the Cannabis Control Commission. So hopefully they'll clarify that. Right. <laughs> now we're not taking the position. We're trying to share some information that that we've collected. I, and, yeah. Uh, I'm, you I'm sorry. I don't mean to be try try to mean to be combative. I'm not trying to be combative. But I also want to try to give you guys maybe some information that you don't really okay. have. It, so why don't, it seems we, like, you why don't we let Joe go through the slides, yeah, sure. then we're going to have a bunch of time for discussion, sure. and so if there's points you want to raise, let's do that in the discussion time. The siting of, of establishment, this is where the planning board comes in. Uh, <coughs> the law, now that, let's see, I have to keep this straight. We, in the referendum in 16, we passed a referendum which became a statute in law. Then the government, the, the state government decided they wanted to get involved, so they modified the statute and then established a cannabis, well then they gave it to the Cannabis Control Commission which is trying to write the regulation. So these are coming, these are in the statute, they're not necessarily in the regulation. I think the regulation says that the marijuana facility or establishment has to comply with local bylaws. This section is telling us how to write the bylaws, what we can write into the bylaws. So I'm guessing the way this is going to work, the statute is telling us what we can do and how to do it. The Attorney General will decide if we did it correctly and met the statute. And then the, the establishment would have to comply with it when they came to town. And the town is allowed to make by vote well, we have to any follow, bylaws that they want. Well, we have to follow what's in the statute. Am I correct? Am I phrasing yeah. it correctly? And they can't be unreasonably right. impractical. Whatever that means. Whatever, Whatever that, that means. means. I bet there's a well, because, because statute. people are trying, you know, I mean, we're, we've made it legal in our state to do this, and people shouldn't be imposing extra boundaries on I anyone. I think that That's first why. one in particular that is going to fall on the Attorney General. Yeah. If the town decides to write a bylaw that, that we're comfortable with, and we, we then have to send it to the Attorney General, they can say that's <coughs> not reasonable, or it is reasonable, and they can approve it. Then we can use it when an establishment comes to town. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so the questions that we're asking, assuming we're there, are not unreasonably impractical. Um, what kind of uh, establishments do we want in common? Uh, what scale do we want? Um, people have told me that we shouldn't have let um, the, the, the machine shop guy, Mike Kirkland, we, we shouldn't have allowed them to put that building in Conway. I don't know why, I can't think of any reason why it shouldn't be in Conway, but do we want facilities of that size or bigger? The, the cannabis law gives different licenses for different sizes of facility, 5,000, 10,000, above 10,000. So they have, the fee goes up with the size of the facility. But there, there seems to be no limit to the size. One of the articles that I put out there, a fellow in uh, North Andover wanted to take over a building that was 25 acres, a million square feet. Yeah. And it got voted down by the town, but, but he was, he was advocating for the bylaws. What's that? Where? In North Andover. It was an old. It was an old telephone building, a Lucent or Bell telephone yeah. building. <coughs> so, and, well, that's a positive thing, isn't and so, it? And <laughs> it is a very positive thing, wouldn't it be? And so, in and in um, Conway, our current zoning bylaws, we do not have a square footage limit in our zoning bylaws. We have. The limits in our zoning bylaws are that you can't have a business with 
more than 15 employees on site at a time or more than 50 customers on site at a time and that's without a special permit. without a special permit you could come for a special permit say you want to have a restaurant that had 100 people there you could come for a special permit for that but what's allowed by right is 15 employees on site 50 um, customers on site we don't have anything about square footage right now so other than some <coughs> parking regulations about parking spaces and what I call the 15, 50 by Is there parking regulations? Yeah, yeah it's about 20 met. people <laughs> that park up and down. Like, <laughs> you wouldn't believe we had parking regulations. But I, I um, so the really question we're asking, do you have any sense of what feels right for guns? Do you, do you care? Do you want uh, Do you want a million square feet? I don't think it's going to happen in Conway. I don't think that that's a concern for Conway because I don't think that's going to, you know, nobody's really going to do that. Um, I feel a little confused. Uh, there's lots of ways to do something like this, and I'm actually very much in favor of it. Um, you can have small farms doing small scale marijuana that can be inspected. And, and, um, and you can know what they're doing to the environment and, and control, you know, that they're doing eco-friendly kinds of things. Or you can go in a direction which I don't think I would want to go in, making a huge establishment for some, somebody who's really wanting to make a huge amount of money or whatever <laughs> in the middle of town. I don't, I don't think that's a really healthy way to go. So I'm not sure in this language when you talk about establishments. I mean, I sort of picture individual farmers, people who uh, are gardeners, who yeah. may want to earn And that's, some that's money. the reality of who would really can, want to do no, something like that in this town anyway. Actually, oh, I'm, yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I came late. Um, yeah, can, can, we just, can you just back up the slides to show the kinds of establishments we're talking about? We're talking about commercial establishments. Yeah, but that's the thing I'm, that well, surprises but, and me. These, one these of the things, allowed. so wow. one of the, these are the kinds of establishments. I, she might not have been here when I mentioned the cooperative. Right. They're, they're, within these groups, you can also have <coughs> smaller things like a cooperative, which is um, six small farm, farm six locations right. where you grow. They get together and form a co-op, and they can process it so they can we make rounding. You know, the farmers can get together and grow the marijuana and maybe make some right. product if they want to. And they can't sell to the retail market; they have to sell to a store. But their farmers can get together and grow crops. Right, and the, and that. Can be they, you know, in, in California, they tried to pass a law to limit the size of the marijuana facility to 10 acres, but it didn't pass, and they were trying to make it easier for the, the small farmers to, to be uh, so, in the business. Right. And they were sort of writing out the big cut, the big suppliers, yeah, and trying to write in the small. So, it didn't so, pass. So that, that would can be, I just sort of explain what we're doing here for this evening for those folks who came in late? We have this agenda on the wall here. We're going through a slideshow with explanations of what the current <coughs> laws, you know, information about the kinds of establish commercial establishments that are possible in the state and sort of laying the framework of this is what's possible. Then we're going to have a discussion about exactly the kind of concerns you're talking about. And we're going to have an, a poll at the end about with, okay, do you want, which kinds of establishments do you want or not want, what are your concerns? So what I would suggest is right now, if we can go through the slides, get the information, so we all have a certain amount of information, then we'll have the discussion. I saw you wanted to take a picture of some of the information. We're happy to send you a PDF of this slideshow. Anybody who wants to, if you write your email address on the sign-in sheet, we'll send you a PDF of it. So, go ahead, Joe. <laughs> We don't, okay, we don't have a medical marijuana zoning district. We don't have any medical marijuana facility. But uh, the second question is more, maybe more relevant. Now there's some pictures of a retail store and a healing house, greenhouse. I guess that's just an indoor drawing. It's a cultivation. Uh, in uh, Englewood, Colorado, and that's a cultivation. So the question we're asking is, do you want us to sort of create a zone in town where all this would be focused or is it a free-for-all? Right now we have a pretty liberal bylaw. You could put one of these facilities anywhere in Conway. Do we want to do that or do we want to try to, like most of the towns are putting these not in the residential district. 
our whole town is pretty much agricultural residential. So we don't have we don't have that option at this point. But Shelburne is just proposing a bylaw. They're saying not to put these in the residential, but keep it in the industrial commercial zone. It couldn't actually be absolutely anywhere. Couldn't be within 500 feet of. The default is 500 feet from the school. From but I think they're trying to change that to where children congregate. Is that in, in, like in the regulations? It, it references um, schools, daycare centers, and w where children congregate. It's two. It's. There's two locations where it's brought up. One has the broader definition, so one of the comments that was at, um, there was a, a listening session recently by the Cannabis Control Commission, and folks said, you know, it should be consistent with the broader de definition. Mm -hmm. but we'll see. And at the default is 500 feet. Can you make it more feet. or less? It's, you can make it less. Whether you can make it more is another question. Because some t communities may decide mm -hmm. that 500 is not so that that would be another question we would we're trying to get a sense for it. the take my takeaway from that meeting one of them was which was put well in the paper is keep it away from the young kids you know so if you subscribe to that then you're going to want to keep it 500 feet or more maybe now some towns apparently will opt to go less than that depending on how they feel about protecting their children you know? <coughs> are you interested in a marijuana cafe um, it could be a simple cafe, you know, we, we were jokingly when we were working on the senior center, we were going to put it in the senior center and have a lot of happy seniors in town. <laughs> but um, it could be a, a traditional cafe, but it could also be uh, the Asheville House, if, if this thing about not serving alcohol was to get, uh, you could go to the Asheville House on Wednesday night and do something or Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. Take it on Asheville, because we got people here from Asheville. <laughs> I guess it could be the Conway Inn, too. Yeah. So how do you feel? That was, that's one of our questions that we're asking you to put on the, on the survey later. Is how do you feel about you know, a cafe where you can go and smoke and get high? You know? <coughs> Other than in a place that serves liquor. Right, and there's a process for, there's a special process for marijuana, for allowing marijuana cafes that involves, um, in, you know, having to do both a, um, t a town meeting vote um, and then also a ballot question. So it's, it's a special process that's different than, like if, if Conway decided, yes, we want to have cultivators, yes, we want to have independent testing labs, yes, we want to have retail stores, that could be done in um, a bylaw format, this would require a different level. Is that, am I correct in yes. Yes. how I'm saying that? The bar, the bar is much higher. The hurdle is much higher if you want to have a cafe. Right. Yeah, there has to be a, there has to be a boat for a cafe. Correct. Okay. Right. Now, is this the section that covers going to the movie theater and getting infused brownies? Does that fall under the cafe section? Uh, it's not clear. It's not clear. The whole you know, mix. Use, was right. um, something new that came out with the regulations. In the regulations, as Peggy said, there's a mixed use thing where you can, as a, not as your primary business, but as a secondary part, like you might be able to go to the movie theater and buy some infused products. Like somebody was thinking they should put a dispensary inside a movie theater. To design a petition. Oh, wow. now, now the governor stepped in just in the last couple of days and said that this commission should maybe pull back and just work on what's in the law. I think what's happening, they're doing all these listening sessions and they're getting all these, what probably they perceive as good ideas. So they've added all this in, oh, we got to worry about the small farmer. And, oh, we got to worry about the movie theater. And I think the governor is saying, why don't you go back and do what you were supposed to do. And then I think that's what he said. <laughs> what that was in the paper. He, he just I, I had an article that. in the paper yeah. that yes. the commission should get back to the task they were assigned yeah, to do. Yeah. So, but they, it's sort of, project is sort of growing, I think. You know? mm -hmm. I, we used to call it Project Creep when I was working. But, yeah. <clears throat> um, what types of reviews or factors should we consider if we are going to write a bylaw? Um, as we said, we have the special permit if you're a certain size, uh, number of people, number of customers. Do we want to have different lot sizes? Do we want to keep these further away from residential houses? Uh, or can somebody buy a lot next door to you and put it in a store, right next door to your house? Uh, setbacks from 
school to school right now we believe is 500 feet. Do we want to worry about hours of operation? Uh, I think water consumption and energy is going to be a difficult one, but uh, apparently there have been some issues with odors and possibly noise. Mostly odors, odors from what I don't know. Cow farms, right? <laughs> Uh, hazardous materials. We we've been told that there are some pesticides still being used. I don't. Uh, I think the craft farmer would probably try to go organic and maybe not do that. But um, we're not sure. We you know we haven't confirmed that. There will be there probably will be some kind of fertilizers or plant enhancers used. Um, they use a lot of light, um, both for growing and light, might be lights for security, external lights on the building so the Security police can, can monitor the facility. Signage. Um, I went to one of the uh, listening sessions. There was one fellow that was passionate about that they shouldn't be able to use the marijuana leaf mm -hmm. because it's false advertising. And when you think of a leaf, you think of something that's wholesome and healthy. And his argument was this is everything but wholesome and healthy. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, those are the kinds of comments that people are making. But signage, there is some limitations. Um, and you, I think you can't advertise to enhance children, I think, in some way. Peggy may know more yeah, about there, that. Yeah, there's pretty detailed regulations to try and, you know, make the advertising not geared towards children. So there's a lot of restrictions in terms of the advertising. And, you know, there's been lots of concerns about the edible products not looking like candy or other things that gummy, might, gummy bears or might be mistaken by a, a child for something to eat. <coughs> um, you typical the size and appearance of building or the size of the building lot. I think we mentioned that earlier. The, um, if you make a lot smaller, that may be more of an encouragement for the farmer rather than the big industry. Um, there was there were a number of people at the meeting I think you know, that were in favor of making sure the small farmer was included in this, mm -hmm. and, and it was a little easier for him to get him into the business. You know. Screening from residential neighborhoods and properties. Um, there, part of the law currently requires a host community agreement. This is something that would be executed by the selectmen. Uh, it would be an agreement between the establishment and the town selectmen as to um, how, the, how they would perform in the town. It could also include um, impact fees to the town. If we could show that it was going to take a half a police officer, or, or, then those kinds of things can be included in the agreement. Do you know of any other things that are included? They have to be substantiated, I think. I haven't, I haven't seen one of the, the, these host community agreements, but you know, presumably if there was uh, higher levels of wastewater treatment required or things of that nature. But um, some of this is unknown at this point because we don't have experience or we don't have any examples yet of those, those communities. So, you know, this will let, it has to be reasonably related to the cost and it can't be more than 3% of the gross sales uh, for what, for five years. And then there can also be a local tax option with some people, I think. Tom Lesser spoke up at the last meeting when we did the moratorium, saying that we could make $100,000 a year. I think that 3%, that means you have to do $3 million worth of business. So I, I don't know how practical or impractical that is. Uh, I don't know if we could do $3 million worth the marijuana business. Some maybe, of the key maybe dates. Put one of those big facilities up. Um, March 15th uh, is when the Cannabis Control Commission is supposed to publish their regulations. They're being asked to go slow and careful, I guess. So whether they'll make it on time, I think they're now talking about some kind of phase rollout where they. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means. But they'll do certain. They'll roll them out in in um, in small groups, I guess. Um, in April, they're supposed to take applications, and ideally our bylaws would be in place by April 1st, but we do have a moratorium. Now, if someone wanted to go into town, part of the process is they have to get a letter from the planning board saying that they comply with the bylaws. So it, right now, we would have to say there's a moratorium in town. If we lift it, when we lift the moratorium, we would then have to say, uh, assuming 
We didn't write any bylaws that, yes, it's provisionally approved, but they need a special permit if they're going over 15 customers, I mean, yeah, 15 employees and 50 customers. So it would be sort of a conditional approval. And so, would, and you're thinking that that it is it would fall on the planning board to notify the. I believe that's isn't that the. It's also not clear. It's not clear. Mm -hmm. It's not clear from the regulations well, what the they, process is and what, how how, it says they will notify the towns that there's an application and the town has, I believe, 60 days to respond whether or not it's in compliance with the town regulations. With the town, it does but it's, it does say it's too, right? Yeah, it's all all. I, I assume it was planning board. Would, even if you wrote it, we'd have to tell you that they're in compliance with our zoning bylaw. So, we've asked them to notify the select board, the planning board, building inspector, which is often the first stop for determination of whether or not you're in compliance with your zoning bylaws. Um, board of Health, Board of Health gets involved in regulations. But the process isn't clear. But no, <coughs> to go back to Tom's question, they need a letter from the town saying that they're in compliance or provisionally in compliance with the town. But if you don't provide the letter within their time frame, then it's assumed you're in compliance. <laughs> so our standard letter would say... Uh, so potentially someone or, could open and operate a, a business without the town knowing until the town found out. Well, no. presumably they, they're, they supposed, license, they're supposed to have a host community license. agreement negotiated with the town <laughs> oh, and yeah. submit that with their application. So I would think it, it's unlikely that the town wouldn't know about it, but what the town might not, if depending on how the process is unfolded in terms of, of finding out whether you're in compliance with the local regulations, that 60 days isn't that long of a time frame for it to come into town, yeah, have the evaluation, if you're, and then- if you're talking about perfect buildings, and yeah, yeah. that's not- not a huge amount of time. So no. the, for, for small towns that have part-time town administrators, volunteer select boards, volunteer planning boards, you just, everybody needs to have a heads up that there's this time clock ticking and you need to pay attention to these things when they come in and make sure that you get your response back. And with normal planning board activities, your the clock starts when it goes to the town clerk. I don't even think the, the law requires it to go the to the town clerk. The regulations aren't clear. They weren't written by people that normally write bylaws, so they they sort of missed the step of going to the town clerk. Right now, if you want a special permit, you have to submit it to the town clerk, and that starts the clock for the planning board. But that's not in the current regulations. There's a lot of fluff. <laughs> um, should we limit the number of, of uh, establishments? The law, there's a provision in the statute, I guess, that we can both limit the number. Um, you can limit the number, the types. So you can say we want to be a cultivator, but we don't want to have a retail store, or vice versa. You can you can allow all, or you can allow some, and you can um, limit the number. So that those are all things that the town is free to look at, and, and uh, as we move forward. Um, so if we think we want mostly growers and one retail store, we can do that. Uh, if we want 10 retail stores and one grower, we can do that. So there's a lot of options to the town if we want to go that direction. Um, question we have for you is, do you think locations, are you worried about locations in town uh, where this could happen? Um, I believe that's a still of some kind. I assume they're extracting the that's chemicals. Extraction machine. Extraction, yep, extraction machine. Yeah, extraction machine. On the left side. Um, I don't. And the other one. That's is a for press. It, That's a, a manufacturing facility, facility where they're creating and manufac uh, marijuana infused products. Infused. Oh, that's probably like some sort of so packaging machine there. So I, and one of the persons at the hearing said these are chemicals <laughs> that when you this is this is not your grandmother's grass you know um, this is not what you smoked when you were a kid they're extracting these chemicals they're making them one person made an argument that we have some data on the use of marijuana but not on some of these concentrated chemicals. There's, there's uh, 
160 known cannabinoids. It's the most diverse plant on the earth. Right. <laughs> so those extractions are things that people are using to like, you know, cause like cure diseases and things. I mean, people are not having seizures because of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, they're not chemicals. There's no, they're, they're compounds. Yeah, I guess they are, but. I mean, they're natural, they're, they're naturally, they come from a natural source. I didn't say they were bad, I was just saying, they're not the, the grass, <laughs> they're not the weed. No, I don't know, I just keep hearing the same old talking point, and I've heard like a million times for people, and it's kind of odd. Well, you no, know, it's the same old grass. Well, I mean, or it's, you know, or the, like the, the argument, laughing joke about the things. The argument like. that's being made is we don't have a lot of data on the effect of marijuana. We don't have the data because, because people have been obstructing the progress. That's, right. that's yeah. why we don't have the data. Yeah. And the more we obstruct the, the chemists and the people that know how to do these things, the, the longer it's going to take to get that data. Okay, we probably don't have to cover this, but um, this is what we would do if we were going to go ahead here after the hearing. If we decide to change the bylaws, um, we would have an official public hearing on whatever uh, regulations we came up with. Um, and it would be a second, maybe a third time to discuss these, and then it would go to town meeting, and then it would get approved by the uh, attorney general. Two thirds vote at town meeting to approve it. That's right, it. and then it goes to, to the Attorney General. Um, we already talked about yeah, this. We're eliminating the establishments. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you know, are there questions of like information that was here? Or is there information? One question I have is we did get a letter from someone in town who said we should pursue hemp because I guess hemp has more of the chemicals that are used for medicinal purposes and less of the Psychoactive, yeah, no, no, no. higher. There's higher CBD levels. CBD levels. Right. CBD levels, and that it has all kinds of other uses. And so that, so that right. One of the, the, the one of the marijuana points, is not as good. Right. One of the, the medical side. <laughs> right. One of the points that that person was making was that um, if there's farmers in Conway who are interested in pursuing growing, you know, a, a crop that could do good things, that hemp could be something to consider instead of. Uh, instead of or in addition to marijuana. Um, so are there other, are there questions about the slideshow? I want to again appreciate Peggy for helping us put, thank for putting you, this together. Peggy Sloan from FERCOG, thank you very much. And Joe for thank you. showing us through that. Nice. Are there questions, like informational kind of questions? Do you have any information you want to give us? <laughs> right, and then, and then what, from given all of this and given what you walked in the door with, um, what do you think? Are, do, should Conway have commercial establishments related to marijuana? What kinds? Are there, do you have thoughts about location, thoughts about size, thoughts about any of that? Tell us or tell each other. What do you think? I think some towns, not necessarily in Franklin County, but some towns are actively soliciting, trying to get these people to come to their town. They see it as a financial advantage. And they see the taxation, I guess. Of the uh, I think that people that are, you know, looking to be successful with a dispensary is aren't really going to be looking to put one in the center of Conway. And I don't think it's going to last very long if they do. You know, just like any other. I mean, there's not. There's very few successful businesses in town, and it's probably pretty hard to keep them going, right? There's one going in Green Hill, right? Medical marijuana. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, just businesses in general. I mean, you got to look at the history of the town. Whether you know, I mean, who's really looking to build a big facility in this town? I mean, logistically, does it really make sense? You know, yeah. I I just don't think you know. Talking about setting up all these rules to limit people. I mean, we already have. A uh, system in, in play to limit people to 15 employees. So, I mean, how big of a facility do you think we could really put in here with 15 employees? I'm sorry, I'm taking it you're just for small business. Is that I, your point? I mean, I do. I I am too, but I'm not. I'm not for uh, limiting people. Mm -hmm. So, say you know, maybe you know, somebody started their small business in town here and realized that. 
they had to, you know, expand. It, it, you know, I wouldn't want to. I, I just. Well, have to get I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand the whole why. Why these? There's a group already creating all these laws. They're taking a lot of our community's concerns into consideration, and have taken a lot of them into consideration. I think it's been pretty well crafted. I mean, yeah, they have missed a lot of the logistical things that you guys are talking about, but once again, our state is going to, I'm sure, delay things before a lot of that comes out. I mean, the, the law already said, too, that, you know, dispensaries can't be opened, or that the medical dispensaries will get the, uh, the first go-around, so they'll be the first ones to open. I mean, it... Right. So it you're, just seems you're, like a lot of wasted time so you're thinking on you something that won't miles. ever really affect our community much. And, you know, when somebody puts up their facility, they're not going to be asking you to come visit them. So, you know, I mean, like, it's not, it's not like, you know, if I was to open a growing facility, I'm not going to invite people to come there. You know, because it's, it's not like, you know, that's... Well, it's the, a secretive the, kind of, you know, they don't want people the, stealing the their stuff. The facility would be limited by the number of people, not the customer. The retail store would more likely be regulated by the... And, that, and, and let me clarify. Uh, if you have under 15 and under 50, you could do it by right, which means you can just go ahead and do it. You don't have to come to the planning board. This law is a little different. It says you have to come to the town no matter how big it is. Right, right. and what I'm saying is, is there's the, those things have been put forth in this law. I don't think there is a necessity. And like I said in the town meeting, I don't think it's a necessity at all to have done this. I mean, I think this is a waste of, you know, time, really. Okay, so thanks. So do other folks have thoughts about do we need bylaws? If we need bylaws, what things would you want or not want in the bylaws, what kinds of businesses would you like to see or not like to see in Conway? Hi. I have a question. Um, do you have information about um, states that are already down this path and if they have any thoughts on how they might have, if, if things are working for them, if things aren't working for them? Um, Supposedly the cannabis board was canvassing a bunch of states that already have it legalized yeah. to try to come up with a list of their problems and right. they accomplishments were, yeah. and try to introduce that into the states, our state's regulations. Right. <coughs> right. I mean, one of the things that I heard in a meeting this week was that um, Colorado has seen an increase in impaired driving um, with accidents caused by impaired driving. Um, and they, you know, and they have the concern about not being able to do field sobriety tests. Um, but I, but I don't know in terms of, you know, right. I don't know, Peggy, if you know anything about other. So states. The, the list of potential impacts was taken from literature from around the country where you know it has been legalized and it's been large scale organizations, industry, I guess it's referred to, that have come in and put in cultivation facilities and put in these manufacturing facilities. Mm -hmm. So I think for Franklin County towns, it's a question of scale. So, you know, there's a 20,000 square foot facility proposed in, in Burniston, mm -hmm. and that's a pretty large facility for most of our towns. Um, I think, you know, the retail is going to be driven by the amount of demand. So if you're a smaller community, are you likely to have a retail center? Unless there's a traffic volume to support that, perhaps not. But if, if they need to have locations to grow cultivation facilities, our land is probably less expensive in Western Mass than it is in the Eastern part of the state. And they need to grow within the state boundary because they can't transport across state lines because then they're gonna be in violation of federal law. Mm -hmm. So that suggests that you know, one area that may impact our rural towns that have a lot of residential ag are these cultivation facilities. And then you have to think about what scale is appropriate in those neighborhoods. And so if you're used to seeing a, a barn that's, you know, five or 7,000 square feet, how's a 20,000 square foot 
building going to look, or if you have an outdoor growing operation, it's got to be secured. So that implies that there's going to be fencing around it, and lighting, and security, and how is that going to look in your residential ag area? So I think if you think about each of these facilities, some towns have industrial parks, and so testing, cultivation, you know, manufacturing facilities, those are uses that would fit more in an industrial park. Um, and then you need to think about what's appropriate for so more the rural part of the part of the regulations, right, says that uh, that you know you know obstruct the view, right? Obstruct your the view. neighbors can't see it. You're supposed but to we, see oh, we screen, screen, screen. Yeah, yeah, you're screen. asking if it should be screen. Um, if you go so I mean that is a that is a regulation. That's a law, right? I mean that no, that no. is a law in the in the in the uh, home grow. Well, so actually, their screening the is more to make sure so that the, that the um, the uh, emergency officials and the public safety officials can have a clear view from a security standpoint. That that's a different, I think, concern about um, making sure that you've got a secure facility and there aren't, isn't any problems with theft going on versus screening to protect an a neighbor who's moved into a rural area not expecting a commercial or a larger scale use appearing next to them and providing some visual buffer and so if a town wants to specify what that kind of screening that is would be a zoning required kind of thing. and so you know most towns have setbacks in their zoning but you, you had mentioned outdoor growing and what i was okay. saying was mm -hmm. in the law it says you can't you, it can't be physical no, it says it has to be secure. I it, has has to be, it can't be visible in the in the. In, I know in the that home grow laws. So. That's, the, that's that's related to personal growing in your backyard. This so is it, different. So the, uh, I mean, I would imagine the. Well, so a, a regular manufacturer, of somebody that had a hundred, could be visible. You can only grow six plants, right? In the, I mean, your personal yeah. backyard growing six plants Whoever is not supposed to be visible. I think from. Outside, the, from your neighbors, or I don't know. From the, the is there anything I in the I have to about mm -hmm. visibility from, okay, like, say you had a field, say you had a twenty-acre field of outdoor-grown marijuana. I don't know whether that's, you know, likely around here. Whether that was visible or not, I don't know if there's anything in the state regulations. Mary, can we use the tea guys as an example? Down on Route Five, the the uh, glowing that's her <laughs> plastic her house down there. The greening house is the, the, the green greenhouse. The greenhouse. Green green yeah, right. Yeah, right. They, on they five have, and ten. They, if the someone wanted like to put one of those, it was twice as big in Conway. How would you feel about that? And our present bylaw doesn't prevent that. So if someone wanted to put one of those in Conway, and well, they, I mean, it kind big, of would because and, and there's and more than and fifteen if employees. There and it, that. It's got this how many employees do you think run that that greenhouse? Well, they just need a special well, permit to have They don't even need a special permit. I don't think there's... No, I'm just wondering how many people you think... I mean, like, to run that greenhouse, it's going to be a lot No, wait, you're missing the point. If you have less than 15 people, you don't need that permit. If you want to go over 15, you need it to have a planning board special permit here. I'd like to go back to the state question, just sure. for what's been learned from other states. Is one thing that I've heard um, from California has to do with taxation. And the... What, what they've seen happen, and I'm sure it's happening in many places and will continue to happen, is that um, for small growers um, to be able to meet the tax requirement can be really challenging. And they can't raise their prices because then what other people are doing is just going black market. And so the, the more taxing, I guess what I'm saying is the more taxing there is, the more taxation there is, the harder it is for small and medium-sized businesses because of the black market. And um, so one way of maybe thinking about that um, is to, uh, what I wonder is if it's possible to um, use some of the energy and resources to uh, inspect the facilities and to have the inspection fees sort of generate something and have it be from that angle rather than taxation, so that things are more above board. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Not sure if yeah, I so you work, so you're working with 
you know, the legal establishment in the town. So the, you're working right. together, mm -hmm. not against each other. Mm -hmm. So you permit and you license, and then the town gets the money from that. Well, and then it just makes more sense. Well, I think the town can do two, three percenters, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, so we can go up to three <laughs> percent on the community <laughs> fee and up to three percent on a local tax. Sales tax. Yeah. So there's, gonna, there's already sales taxes on the state level, and then the town <clears> can add. And this is where many towns are thinking about it as an income stream to the town, mm -hmm. um, is the, the having a sales tax, a local sales tax. And so Ron was next, and then Tom, and then... So the local sales tax is only oh, no. at the dispensary yeah. level, I believe, right? At the point of, of um, sale. <coughs> Whereas right. the other one could be associated with the, the five-year, whatever it's called. Community, community, community agreement. agreement. Is that right? Does a community agreement, can the community agreement impose a like a tax It's a community on the impact fee. On the growers. The, the impact, it's two separate things. So the, I know it is. The, the community agreement, you would have to figure out what impact it was having on police or other municipal right. services, document that, and then you could, That's have, the community that, that impact you could have a new fee. Right. So then, in response to your question, the farmers aren't really getting taxed unless there's this community assessment thing. The 3% uh, tax is just at the dispensary. Is that the, the sales tax at the retail, the retail, the retail level? level. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's at okay. the sale to the consumer. Retail level, level not the farm sure, level. Sure. Yeah. So it's not like the, it's not like the farmers say the farmers grow $100,000 worth of product. Right. They're not getting a right. sale. Not that's getting not a sales tax. Right. That's like, and they're right. selling it wholesale to well, a But they could have back anyway, if the dispensary is being charged 3%, I mean, that that is going to Cost the growers as well. I think I think the Cannabis Control Commission needs to make it clear. It's pretty clear that there's sales tax on retail products, but there's some question about whether there could be. I, I was reading a piece of that. If you if you know if you're a pr producer or some other kind of wholesale selling to wholesale, so all that is needs to be a little clearer. What is clear is retail. Is the like the is sort of standard retail sales kind of tax is clear. In Europe, the they call it a tax. value added tax. Not, so, so Tom and then Andy and then Beth. The current draft of the town meeting warrant for this coming May does include an article proposing a 3% tax. Sales tax if, on if, if anybody comes in, yeah. Just for your information. Okay. Andy? I just wanted to know. I'm. I think we've discussed this, but if we have a grower or we have a retail establishment, anybody who's selling anything, there's going to be security involved and bring trucks and whatever because it's a cash business, right? Because the federal law makes it illegal for them to bank, right? So right. that's just something to right. think about. The, the, it, all of these businesses will be cash ba on a cash basis, not on a, you know, they're not going to be taking credit cards or checks or whatever because they can't use federal banks because it's against federal law. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things that are people, besides it being a high value product in terms of thinking about security, um, there's also that there's a lot of cash that moves in and out. There was well, there was something about in Colorado, it's like the armored cars go in with the, you know, go in with the cash and then they come out with the product. That there's, the it way. sounds like it would be a good business for the armored car business. But and then um, Beth had a Beth had something to say. Oh, I just read this morning that Berkeley in California, Berkeley uh, just decreased the taxes that they were charging to um, this newly established recreational marijuana uh, businesses because they felt they were they would be losing businesses to towns surrounding them. Just mm -hmm. bringing that up. Right, that that's one of the things, right, that it could sort of pit town, it's sort of like in New Hampshire not having a sales tax, so there are all these businesses over the New Hampshire line mm -hmm. that compete with Massachusetts businesses that could be an issue of, you know, which towns have which amount of taxes and makes that more or less attractive to both the business owner and the shoppers. Right. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't happen in Conway, but the other thing that we heard at the meeting, I think, uh, is that in Greenfield, they have a lot of federal housing, mm -hmm. and technically, yeah, yeah. no, none of these. 
people in federal housing can smoke marijuana or have marijuana in, in the facility. So that we need to have, their argument was we need to have cafes available for the, the low income. I think the argument there housing. is that maybe there needs to be some changes to those laws. I know, it was just an To come up to date with the but, laws that we have. So passed. if you have subsidized housing in your town, federally sub section eight, is that what it's called? Section eight. Then technically that would be a marijuana free zone or they didn't get kicked out. So that, that was the argument for having cafes available, is to support the, that community. Yeah. Other questions, concerns? Yeah, I'd be concerned about the environmental impact of like a large facility. I'd be really concerned about that. Um, you know, I don't understand how those things get regulated, but in any of these small towns, that's a big deal. And I think we all want to preserve the farmland that we have as long as possible, um, and wildlife, and mm -hmm. drinking water, and all these things. I don't know what the, so what the load of this industry could be. Could be. I, I suspect the host agreement could be written that you have to use a certain amount of recycled water. I don't know whether you could tell people they had to put some method of generating electricity, solar panels or something, on their facility. Uh, that might have to come in the host agreement. I don't know if we could write a bylaw to that effect, but it's something you could look at. Tom, and then, and then you. I was, uh, I just happened to be talking with somebody today about water levels in town. And uh, the example, there's, there's a, two abutting properties, and one of them gets three gallons per minute, and the abutting property gets 60 gallons per mm -hmm. minute. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and, you, you know, if, if, if a place is, is going to use any more than like a household's worth of water, which is, you know, what, what the town has gotten by on, uh, it might be worth exploring some kind of um, maximum draw or at least study that shows that whatever you're planning to draw isn't going to affect your neighbor's water levels. Yeah. It's pretty hard. I wonder if the state's going to come up with a... Uh, water regulations for marijuana users or growers like to do it for your commercial storefronts. Like we have to have a meter in our, our store and we have to pay so many cents a gallon to use our own water. Hmm. It's interesting. Really? Trying to, you have a well? Because the state says they own all the water and, and, and if you ever have a problem with your well because of salt pollution or whatever else might happen to it, it's your responsibility, not the state's. They own the water, but they won't help you <laughs> keep it purified. Interesting. Yes. And that's right in the rules and regulations. For, for, a, uh, for your type of commercial mm -hmm. establishment. Any kind of commercial establishment. So I would think that they would incorporate that into something to do with like a large growing facility or something like that. Well, there are people. I hope they would. There are people. What are the, the, what are, you know, the, uh, the green community people, the people that are encouraging solar and, and no pipelines are concerned about the energy and water consumption mm -hmm. from marijuana and they're saying we need to do something about that. Yeah. That we need to regulate somehow the consumption of electricity and water. Yeah. So it could be a point of pride to say, wouldn't it be great if we had growers here who could label their product like environmentally friendly on some level or if there was some um, mm -hmm. you know some stamp of approval for that. Yeah, the regulations for this yeah, I don't know. The town do we do have any of those types of regular? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, do we? No, you keep going. You wait. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was actually done. Next okay. Time. Thank you. Okay, then go ahead. So, do we actually have any uh, water regulations for agriculture in town? No, not that we're, not that I'm aware of. No. <laughs> you don't have very many regulations for anything. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Very liberal community. Right. <laughs> I mean, that might be something to, to look at. You know, maybe there's other towns in, in the state or even in other uh, states that have, you know, water rules that are related to agriculture. Right. So because that is, you know, I mean, that's the type of, you know, consumption it is. It's water related to agriculture. Right. So if somebody wanted to grow. Uh, have a greenhouse with ten, a 10 acre greenhouse and grow basil you know, hydroponically, what would be our water concerns there? I mean, in, in some ways, it's moderately irrelevant that it's marijuana. It's, 
if there was, a, even though marijuana cultivation is not considered agriculture, but in, in you know, but as far as impact on the community, would another, if somebody wanted to grow, you know, hydroponic or something that was a high water use crop in Conway, would we be concerned about that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, are, are there questions, other questions, comments, or can we go to the fill out your little form thing and eat lots more snacks so we don't have to take them back with us <laughs> thing, or take like doggy bags for like tomorrow's lunch? Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> Um, other questions, comments? This has been helpful for me. Mm -hmm. Helpful for me. Other or questions? Maybe, maybe this is obvious, but I just can't imagine a small town like Conway um, creating some kind of a restricted zone, like a commercial zone. I mean, this is agricultural space, right? It's, I'm just speaking the obvious. Well, we do have, I mean, we have different, we have like an industrial zone, which is Orchard OSCO. Uh, and that's the only, and then the rest is is agri res residential agricultural. Yeah. But we also have like the by right solar zones, you know, like where you can put up solar farms sure. without having to get, you know, extra permission. So there could be the sort of by right zone or the no go zone. I mean, we could create zones. Tom, uh, Peggy, could you speak to the treatment of marijuana? production as agriculture? It is not considered an agricultural use. Even for a farmer and a co-op? That's correct. The, the, there okay. was state so legislation that, that made it very clear that um, growing of marijuana was not considered an agricultural use. For, for the zoning purposes, right? For zoning purposes. Right. That, that, that there's no zoning exemption. For this type of cultivation. Currently, over five. See, they acres, want to meet. I'm sorry. Over five so acres. You, you know, they, they there's you can't really restrict agriculture under five acres. You can't. There's more. And so they're saying, for purposes of zoning, it's not considered. It doesn't have. There's a, a a section of the zoning that exempts certain uses, like educational facilities, agriculture, where you can't apply your zoning to those. And they made. They made the law. They made a change to the law to make it very clear that this type of cultivation is not considered an agricultural use. So therefore, so the towns we could can regulate it. Closing, so we can zone. regulate marijuana cultivation differently than we can regulate basil cultivation. Yeah, basil cultivation would be considered an agricultural use. <laughs> so if it's on a property that's five or more acres. You cannot apply your zoning to that. That's allowed. It has to be allowed by right. You can't do a special permit process. So if the if you want to use your your over five acre basil growing hydroponic basil growing, we have nothing to say about. It. Right. They follow whatever the state regulations are. I think the key for Conway is if you know the way your your zoning bylaws are, are written. Um, are you it's really hard to correlate 15 employees to square footage, right. given how difficult that <laughs> is. You'd have to go in and do some research about, OK, a 10,000 square foot facility typically has x number of employees. Otherwise, you don't really know what scale you're allowing by right. I it's think, also hard to enforce. I think the communities I started working with, they're thinking that this is a special permit process for any type of marijuana establishment so that they have the opportunity to review, review the application, mm -hmm. make sure that there's adequate conditions placed on it, have a public hearing so the neighbors can have an opportunity to have input and then decide whether or not to grant that special permit. And the conditions are kind of idiosyncratic, right? There, there's no there's no sort of set of you can impose these conditions, but not those conditions. They just have to be reasonable. Well, the special permit process allows you to approve it, approve it as it's presented, approve it with conditions, or deny the special permit. So it's a discretionary permit. Your so, zoning bylaws have to be reasonable. Be, the conditions could just have to be reasonable. Presumably, you have to. Most towns special permit section has criteria, and the criteria are things like protection of environmental resources, for example. So if you're concerned about 
water withdrawal then and you got a really large scale facility proposed and you were concerned about the impacts on private other private wells um, you would probably want some information about how that was going to impact or if you were concerned about wastewater treatment if you were concerned about odors so the special permit process basically gives the town the opportunity to review things if you were concerned about lighting particularly adjacent properties or you know light pollution in the night sky you'd have the opportunity to you know require cutoff fixtures or whatever the other mechanisms you know maybe there's some shielding that could be done so that you don't have a glowing greenhouse 24 but, hours 7. and that that's for properties I, I that would require special permits at this point and i think one of the questions here is do we want to require that sort of thing for operations that might not require a special permit but can can somebody on the planning board speak to the current uh conditions that are applicable to special permits pretty, pretty much what you said we have sort of the standard environmental question i i think that uh, my opinion is we should add a square footage to our mm -hmm. special permit process whether we whether it's for marijuana or not but i think we might want to write a separate section for marijuana that if we're worried about specific levels of light you know i mean there's if it's a greenhouse environment it's going to be light so it's going to be a question of the intensity and how much light, light and water consumption uh, or they have to grow it in an enclosed building where the light doesn't escape if you don't want pollution of the night sky then if you don't want it Wait. i can see them all from here if you don't want to see that you would have to require it to be in a building. I think the idea behind uh, like a greenhouse would be that you're, you know, you're trying to be environmentally friendly by using light in the times that you would need it. Uh, so you know they have these things like you know there's products out there that uh, do things like light deprivation, so that you know they screen out light at certain times and maybe you would supplement light. <laughs> at certain times of day, maybe I'm not aware of those, those light things to maybe the early parts of the morning, and and not to the early parts of night, you know, things like that. But that's what the special permit it allows the town to look at that. I you know the, the greenhouses and if you wanted to have you know the buildings resemble barns, for example. I don't know if that's going to be allowed. If that'll be reasonable, but I'm thinking in terms of what sort of fits into the agricultural areas in Franklin County and there aren't a lot of you know metal buildings right now <laughs> um, right. across the the countryside so what 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 type of you know design standards does the town want to encourage um, or reuse of facilities like some towns that have vacant mills that have good water and sewer infrastructure or those places where they would like to see those buildings reused Right, and so, and so for us, one of the things that we would need to decide is do we want to make, um, well, there's the whole issue of the size, or do, do we want to make that, you know, any commercial marijuana establishment would need to go through a special permit process? That could be something we You're could You're saying write, that's what other towns are? We could write into our zoning. That could be something we write into our zoning. I think that should be one of the first things you should want to do. Would the, would the special permit process be defined? I mean, yeah. it doesn't, I, have, the way you explained it just didn't seem like well, there was so a the process. There, well, there, in yeah. in it just seemed process. like, yeah. yeah. So what you could, what I recommend you do is go to townofconway.com and under the left-hand column, there's downloads and forms and you can see our current zoning bylaws and we have a whole process for what you have to do to get a special permit. And it explains the kind of things that, that Peggy was talking about you know, getting community <coughs> input, public hearings, what kinds of conditions you can apply. And what a special permit process does is it allows community input into what's happening versus uh, business right now, if, you know, without a special permit, you know, businesses that don't require a special permit, you just do your business. You just go, you set it up, you do whatever, the neighbors don't have any comment, that there's no control. The special permit process allows the community to have some input. It doesn't say you can't do the kind of business you want. It, it can put conditions on it. Um, and that could be like whether we get into any specifics with zoning with a zoning bylaw related to marijuana. We could do one that says 
if you want to have a commercial, you know, commercial establishment, marijuana establishment, you need to go through the special permit. You need to apply for a special permit. Um, and then we could make, we could have additionally, you know, addition to that, it's like cell towers. In Conway, we have a process that you can't come in and build a cell tower in Conway without going through a special permit process. And we have a section of the bylaw that's about cell towers that describes some of the, you know, it's, it's very parallel in some ways. It's like we came up with what are the, the sort of uh, standards around cell towers in Conway and here's a special permit process to go through that. We could do a similar thing, a parallel kind of thing around there. The, uh, the group that's concerned, the Green Community Group, hmm? they're, I think they were like proposing that if you built one of these facilities, an indoor one, that you would, for instance, have to use the most efficient lighting. You can't, would have to use currently like an LED light mm -hmm. so that you were energy efficient from day one. That's the kind of things that they're talking about. That's well, the kind I, was, of thing. I was just saying it seems like uh, a lot of people are maybe in agreement that maybe there should be, you know, if, if somebody wants to, it seems like a lot of people don't want a big facility in town. Well, we don't right? know. Or that's kind of a something that that's why we're you'd here. want to review before having right. something like that happen. So maybe that's something the town should consider is that before people build 10,000 plus square foot buildings that there is consideration. Right. And that's the generation of what? Well, the, right. You know, well, that's what, that's what I was saying about the special permit and what is what is the criteria of the special permit. Well, if you roll, if you roll right. I mean, well, I haven't read it or seen it. So, so I'll just give you an example. A lot of towns for retail facilities. Pencils. 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 So, anybody else need one to write on and they pay to have one to write? And, um, yeah, she gets to yeah. keep going on too. So we're all anonymous here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we designed it. All right, we can fill that. Good. Good. How are they? They think they're going to open cafes in the state. They have like how to, they're going to figure that out? They have, it's, a, it's a petition. Yeah. yeah. You have to have ten percent registered voters. Well, no, but like, like, how are they going to deal with the legalities of it? Because you, if somebody goes and eats an edible, or if somebody goes and drinks a beer and goes to a bar, the bar could be liable for their whatever. If somebody eats an edible, I mean. That's, like come on at some point in time and that, I mean that just seems logistically like not possible and the smoking thing I, and the smoking thing like how do you smoke indoors if you're not allowed to smoke within 25 feet of a building or 50 feet of a building did I read correctly that the edibles that it takes longer for the effect so you so tend to overeat them here, I read somewhere that, and, one, um, that one of the issues with them is they the effect doesn't occur as quickly, yeah. so you tend to eat more of it. You tend to overeat these, and then you're in trouble. <laughs> I think what, what they word. say, what they say, is uh, take a small bite and yeah, see how well, you feel I, in I, an hour I, or so. I, 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 I guess there were like liquid that people would take, and this is like one dose, and they didn't think it was tincture. Well, that's what that's what I was saying. You, you know, you take much. a small bite and you wait an hour, or you wait an hour yeah, and a half. Yeah, apparently or, they were impatient. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, you know. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Wait. Well, we're all. I don't have them. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. Nobody's died yet. When you guys get your papers done, I'll take them and tally them. Stick them here, and then we're going to tally them up. And we we'll probably have a second opinion too. Here, so Beth. Yeah, we need to just stand your pitch. What do you think about? Um, you right well, I yeah, you have the answer. I'm just mulling it over my head for a while. Five children. But yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, so or come on over here to the table. And then, yeah, more so over here. With their we serving, would you bring them over to that table over there? Yeah, that, that's what I yeah. Yes. 
Had they discussed and what like small farmers would yeah. would be paying for permits? Yeah, there's a piano in there. Oh, there is. Oh, you are. This is the end of our formal. Canopies. Canopies. This is the end of our formal information session. There's snacks to be eaten. I know, like when I read, read the original one, it said up to fifteen thousand dollars. So. We're so not going to be just, presenting anymore. They're now going to encourage you to